Okay. Any fabric, by the way, will do, as I told you. And what I have here is a very, very soft fabric. You can see how this is liquid metal is what this is called. And you can see how it's just very soft and drapey, very thin. It's meant for maybe blouses or something very thin anyway. But look what happens to it when it's fused to a fleece. It no longer looks like the same fabric at all. So I have the same soft fabric. I have just fused it to some interfacing and to some fleece. I really wanted to stiffen it, so I have some very stiff interfacing between the two layers there. And uh, then I also have the lining and its interfacing. I've already embellished this piece. I've put this little Kalaga patch on here. The opening show of this series had a couple of these elephant Kalaga patches with their sequins on a jacket. And this is one that I had left over, so I thought, let's use it. Let's embellish this bag with it. So I've already sewn that on. And I've already pinned these pieces together. Now what I would do, just finish cutting this little bit out where I had a little excess here of the interfacing. So I'll just cut that off. And then I'm going to sew this. Now I've already partially started sewing this just to make it a little quicker. And I'm just going to, the right sides are together. I'm going to finish sewing around the edges. Just little quarter inch seams are all you need for this, very small. And I want to leave an opening, of course, somewhere because it has to turn right side out after it's sewn. So I'm going to start here where I left off, just overlap my stitches and keep on sewing. And these are just quarter inch seams. A few pins would be nice to hold it in place. And uh, as we stitch this around then, uh, just regular thread. It needs very little strength, but a little bit might be nice. So I have just all purpose thread in here for this operation. And uh, It actually could probably be bigger stitches since these are heavy fabrics. By the time I come up here to the corner, I want to make those stitches a little bit smaller. So I am going to bring the stitches down to a small size because I'm going to have to clip those corners short and I am then going to be turning it and I don't want to endanger that corner. I want to make sure that it is sturdy enough to hold. And now they can get bigger again. So I'll just go up to about here and back stitch. And then we'll be ready to turn and press. OK. Now, the rest of it can stay, really. These are small enough seams that they aren't going to interfere. Uh, you could also cut them out with, with pinking shears, perhaps, to get rid of some of that bulk. That might be a good process. I'm simply going to cut off the corners and turn it. So by the time I cut these corners so that they will turn sharply, we can turn this, get over the ironing board, and uh, press it. And to turn those corners just right, it helps if you have something that will poke them out. Here's a little turner that helps. And this is very heavy, of course, with all that fleece and all that interfacing that I have in it. So I'm pushing hard to get this out. OK. And then we'd turn the other one out the same way. Had I left a little bit bigger opening here, it would have been a little bit easier to turn. But then it's uh, six, one and a half dozen of another, because if you leave a bigger opening, then you have to close the bigger opening. And so uh, whichever way you get the work, this way I'm really pushing to get it inside out, and I did. Uh, really sew it up a little bit too much. I'm just going to clip a thread here so that I can open it slightly more because of that stiff little Kalaga patch that I have there at the other end, that little decorative thing that I've put there. It would be hard to turn if I didn't have a slightly bigger opening. So anyway, once this is all turned, we can press. This is really a wrestling match to get it right side out, isn't it? It's going to need pressing by the time I've wrinkled it a little bit. Ah, here we come. OK, you can see I didn't take much time to do this, and I'm practically finished with it. So it really is a quick, easy little thing to do. And I'm going to do the pressing with the lining side up so that I can get this as evenly done around the edges as possible. Now, it looks like this might be a fragile fabric. It is not. 
you can press it very nicely. And what I also want to do is press these end pieces in. And I'm not going to do any hand stitching to get them together. After this is all pressed, the next operation would be to top stitch, to edge stitch, just all around this edge. And to do that edge stitching, I would also at the same time close this little opening. Therefore, I'll put one pin here to hold it in place. Therefore, it uh, isn't too crucial at this point to uh, worry about the hand stitching, but I do want to get a nice even edge here. Two or three pins will do the job, whatever it takes. Okay, then we can just press it. And probably it'll need more than just this iron. I would guess that it's going to need a wet press cloth and it's going to need a pounding block, a clapper, to really push these edges down. So I'm not going to do a complete job here, but you can just see what I would do. Just press these edges very flat, as flat as is possible, so that it's ready to go. Then after I have this all pressed, then it's time to do that edge stitching on it. And I'm not going to stitch on this. I'll just pick up this, the other bag that I have partially done. But you can see how it's already turning into a bag. And uh, the finished product would then look like this and be fastened in some way with the little ends sewn in. So a quickie, easy thing. Do you have graduation gifts coming up? Do you have maybe uh, whatever gifts? This might be a fun project to make that would do very quickly.